Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to attend uh, this uh, tech talk. So I'm Xiaobing Fu from uh, Epic, uh, Epic Core. So today I would like to uh, introduce uh, something Some about uh, contamination. And uh, the title of my today's talk is contamination in TM and uh, the potential ways for mitigation. So, you know, the, the contamination is a problem for both, both the TM and the SEM. But uh, particularly for TM, this problem is a very headache for every microscopist because it will significantly reduce your image quality and uh, Almost uh, will affect the older imaging and the spectrum thing you are you are doing. So, uh, for example, I will show you a video here. So, what is the contamination? So you see, this is a video I used to do the range gram alignment. So every time when you go to step mode, you need to do alignment. So you see now. This is a very unclear. It looks like uh, some kind of cloudy thing in your sample. I mean, at the beginning, you see in, in the video, we move the sample from uh, one area to another area. If I, read, uh, if I make a uh, large defocus, you will see this kind of dirty thing in the amorphous uh, uh, carbon. This is contamination. So when we mean the contamination, most likely, I mean, uh, it's mainly related to the carbon contamination. Okay, uh, now let's go move on. So today my talk will cover several things. One is contamination, uh, contamination uh, and it's, uh, what is the contamination and it's uh, adverse effects. The second topic I will cover the origination of the contamination. The third one is a way to relieve contamination. So here, I show you another video. So this one is a zonch gram alignment without any contamination. You see, this video is more than, I mean, when you, uh, uh, you see, I'm mean, gonna take a video, uh, my beam is here. Now you see this area is very clean. This is very good. And, uh, Later, you will see that uh, this video take at uh, two minutes. Even in, I mean, in two minutes, there is none, never contamination. This is good. Like, uh, I mean, if uh, you are saying, if uh, like uh, the previous uh, situation, the contamination like that, you can never make a good, uh, good alignment because it will block, block your, Block your, uh, it make your, because you need to see the feature of the range gram, then align the lens. But if the feature is blurred, you can never see, see a good data, good alignment. So you, as, as you can see, this is the alignment usually the first step of your TM work. So for even for the first step, you cannot, uh, make a good beam, how can you take a good data? Impossible. So this is, uh, 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 that's why the contamination is very important. I mean, a, 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 a sample free of contamination is very important for us. So this is a sample and also, so if like this happens, so at least it means the holder and my team and uh, your sample, all of them are clean. Okay, anyway, let's move, 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 uh, move on. So what is the contamination? So the contamination, I mean, the mechanism is uh, uh, similar as the electron beam induced uh, deformation. So I, I, I take some image from the internet so you can see that uh, when, you are, when you are always focus on uh, have electron beam and uh, will, uh, and, uh, uh, induce some gas and uh, some, uh, it will reduce the decomposition. So it, you can use this method to grow the PT needle. You can see 
this case. But for over TM, the contamination is not good. So the main source of the contamination is, uh, I mean, when we measure contamination is uh, hydrocarbon contamination. Because the hydrocarbon, the hydrocarbon itself is you know, not stable. Uh, and the electron beam is very easy. Uh, yeah, I mean, they will decomposition and then they decomposition again on your sample. Uh, like the TM grid, for example, it's also a carbon, either a pure carbon. Like that, it's good because uh, that carbon is uh, very stable on the electron beam. So that's why we mainly, uh, we mainly, uh, when we see the, the main contaminant is uh, hydrocarbon. And another thing uh, you would like to pay attention is uh, oxygen and uh, water molecule, because this kind of uh, things are also unstable and uh, electron, uh, electron beam. I mean, they will, they, uh, there will be many reactive radicals. So this will introduce many artifacts. And the uh, adverse of the contamination, there are several, actually many. First, they will increase the thickness of your specimen because you know when your carbon deposit, uh, uh, when your when your sample have a carbon deposition, uh, your your carbon you know yeah. your carbon layer is around. Uh, I mean, it can be very thick, maybe more than 10 nanometer. So that's why I can increase your sample thickness. Another thing in the way reduce your resolution because. Uh, you know, when your sample is too thick, the resolution is decreased. Another thing, you lose our contrast. This is very critical for some more low, uh, for some more low, uh, low Z element uh, uh, sample like a polymer. They they mainly contain carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. So if a contamination happens, the contrast will be very low. You can never see anything. You you can never see your sample. Another one is uh, this one will hamper uh, your accurate uh, spectroscopic uh, analysis because uh, you know when you do EDS or use your sample must be very thin. So if there is a carbon dip, uh, deposition, I mean in your EDS spectrum you will see a very strong carbon signal, and uh, for your use it will become worse because it will make your colors peak very wide. So you will never get uh, any meaningful information. So the, the five one is uh, uh, the, the contamination will reduce uh, many problems when you do a uh, strong gram alignment, uh, as I showed you before. So now let's uh, I show you more details. For example, this is your contamination during the beam alignment. Uh, and uh, in, in the left figure, you will see very dirty thing in your sample. This is a carbon deposition. If you have your sample larger defocus, you will see more, you will see some kind of thing like this, uh, like this, like this, this, all of them are contamination. So, you know, see, that's why you cannot make a good alignment of your beam. And uh, this is one your contamination during your atomic resolution imaging. So this is this kind of a cloudy thing, you see? This cloudy thing is a contamination. This is your sample. Because the carbon depolator, uh, the carbon deposition happens on your sample, the surface of a sample, you see, the sample become very blur. So you can never see a nice atomic resolution image. And also for EDS mapping, so this is the one case I show you. So the left one is a hard diff image. The right one is a, a ABF image. So you can see that, uh, I mean, this is one is uh, after about uh, uh, five minutes EDS mapping, you see this kind of window area. Because I do the EDS map uh, at uh, this area, you can see the contamination. If you compare the con Terminated area and uh, the clean area, you will see the contrast of the contaminated area becomes low and all the contrast reduced. So for the contamination, uh, it has 
how can I say? This is some facts about the contamination. So in a figure, you see A, B, C is three. So, you know, for A, I mean, the convergence angle of the electron beam when you're low, it's very small. That's why you can see the carbon growth along the Z direction. And for C, the, the convergence beam is very large. So it's a large area. Like this one, most likely, uh, uh, I mean, the carbon will distribute the uniformly along the, your, your beam, beam uh, uh, eliminated area. So that's why the fact that one, uh, like B, the middle case, the convergence angle not so large, also not so small, like this, the carbon contamination. The dark, uh, the black area is the, the contamination, the carbon depletion. So, uh, the uh, so now you will, will have this fact. The contamination area is normally a chrome or some kind of annular spot or needle with a diameter nearly equal or to the elimination size or your beam size. So the second one is the thickness of the source uh, of the surface contamination vary with time. Of course, if you focus the beam for a longer time, it will become thicker. And the shape or actual shape of the contamination structure and the contaminated rate depending on many things. For example, the vacuum level of your microscope, the size of your incident electron beam, your electron probe current density, also related to your, the sticking coefficient for the hydrocarbon on your samples. Also, the previous existed contamination within your microscope, also related to the history of your sample. For example, some kind, sometimes uh, some users they prepare some uh, nanoparticle with a very good shape using many surfactant. Like that surfactant is a main source of contamination. Also related to the handling of your sample or holder. Because that's why I really require everybody, when you take a holder, load a sample, load a holder, please wear the glove. So because on your surface of your hind, the, your, hind your hind is very humid. It also contains many uh, dirty things. Also maybe related to the, the fact streaming of oil from a diffusion pump the iron milling system. I will show you show you this later. Also, for example, some user using electro, electrolytic uh, staining. There are many some re, re, residual chemicals on your surface sample. Also, for example, if you put your sample in the air for a long time, several days, then in the air, there are many uh, contaminations, uh, hydrocarbon will be pollution on your sample. Another thing is related, uh, another thing is uh, contamination rate related to the charging effect. The charging effect uh, uh, will become a dominant factor for small beam size because the charging will generate many secondary electrons. So that's why for different users, for, for different uh, observation, I mean, different impairment, uh, you will see that uh, the contamination is totally different. And uh, now uh, let's focus on the origination of the contamination. So usually, uh, uh, I mean, over TM, of course, is a high vacuum uh, uh, environment, but uh, actually there are many radio Dirty, uh, dirty thing or, or hydrocarbon in a vacuum. So that's, uh, uh, I mean, actually the TM column is a way that usually contaminated or it's a heavy or lightly contaminated, it always. So this kind of contamination mainly come from the oil, oil pumping system. For example, there are, there are, uh, there are two figures I show here. So, I mean, in uh, I mean, in each figure, you will see two color. Uh, one is 
red color. Another one is uh, is uh, um, some kind of uh, light light uh, blue color. So the top of I mean the top component I mean the uh, the top of your column is a high vacuum condition. For example, the electron gun, uh, gun uh, top lane, and uh, the specimen chamber usually are maintained uh, at a very high vacuum. For example, one minus 10 plus, uh, minus uh, six pump uh, uh, by an uh, iron pump. And the bottom of the column is some kind of a low, I mean, we do not require a very high vacuum for the bottom of the, of the area, like uh, your viewing screen, the photographic chamber, I mentioned a relatively low vacuum. And uh, for this kind of the area, usually we use either a diffusion pump or a turbo molecule pump. If, for example, you use an oil pump, if you use the oil pump, then the oil will diffuse from, I mean, diffuse from the back of this to your column. That is the main source of the microscope. So of course you can exchange this pump, I mean, from an oil pump to a, to a, uh, to a turbo molecular pump, or you can, you can exchange this one, but by doing this, you will increase the cost of your microscope. That's why many of the TMs, I mean, also including ours, belong to the uh, belong to the uh, belong to the second situation. I mean, this area we we use the iron. I mean, diffusion oil diffusion pump. That's why our vacuum system was not a perfect case. But uh, it's fine, it's fine, we can still use it. For some new, for example, if you really want to keep a very high vacuum, you have to use, uh, use other, I mean, do you, have, you cannot use uh, oil diffusion pump here. And another thing is uh, contamination may come from the uh, re radio contamination on a sample holder, O ring, other related parts. That's why I always tell you that never use your hand touch your tip of the holder because the O ring, like other parts, they are, they are directly inserted into the uh, sample chamber of the microscope. So they must be very clean. So if you do not wear a glove, maybe there are many contaminants on, on your sample holder. And also, another important one is your. Uh, either uh, the contaminant come from your sample itself. So another one is uh, incorrect handling of a sample and holder, for example, without, without gloves. Then uh, we have to, we have some ways to relieve the contamination. For example, if the microscope itself is contaminated, then even your sample is clean. You still, uh, when you load the sample into the into the the, the uh, microscope chamber, it will you will still see the contamination. So previously we will do the ACD bake, but the ACD bake usually take uh, one week. Also, it is not so good if the contamination is very strong. Even you do ACD bake you cannot remove the contamination. So the good thing is uh, last year, uh, my colleague Paul in our epic, so we, uh, we uh, 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 our proposal was awarded by OR. So now we already purchased the plasma cleaner holder. It's a very special, unique holder. You can use this holder to do a plasma cleaning of your chamber your microscope chamber. This is very efficient. You just load the holder in and do some plasma cleaning for less than five minutes. Then you can remove most of all of the hydrocarbon inside the, uh, the microscope column. So, so this is one way to reduce the contamination of the microscope. 
And you see this one is an example. So figure A, you see this area. So it's a before, before do the plasma cleaning, you see this area. You see this area, contamination. If you park your electron beam here, you see many contamination. This is the before cleaning. If after cleaning, you see very clean. If your beam is there for one minute, very clean. So that's why this, uh, hold, this unique plasma cleaning holder is very, very helpful for us. So another one is a uh, holder. So as I mentioned to you, so the holder may be contaminated. So what you can do is uh, bake your holder. But uh, the unfortunate thing, I, I mean, unfortunately, in the market, there is no pumping system which can be used to bake your holder at a high vacuum condition, also high temperature. There is no pump station like this. So last year, Nelson uh, uh, and Kumo, we worked together, we designed, uh, we modify our pump, uh, our pump station, we add uh, some lamp. So we build a holder baking system. It can keep your holder in a high vacuum condition. Meanwhile, at a high temperature, we can go to a high 200. Then we can evaporate all the radio hydrocarbon or polymer or any other contaminants on your holder. And also we have RGA, for example, you can attach the holder with RGA, you can detect uh, the you can detect uh, the elements, uh, the the contaminant the elements of the contaminants. For example, I I copy this figure from the paper. You see, usually the TM holder also not clean. So you see, this this is uh, uh, based on by RGA. You see the uh, hydrogen. Water and uh, some organics, pump oil, many contaminants. But uh, after a long time of bake out, you will see this will be significantly reduced. So this is very good to reduce the the contaminants on the holder. Another one is a plasma cleaning of the holder and the sample. Plasma cleaning is something I give you a schematic uh, like this. So you use some hydrogen or argon or, uh, or oxygen. You uh, can, for example, this uh, iron beam can induce the, the decomposition of your hydrocarbon and remove them. This is a plasma cleaning in our epic. So the TMU 1050. So you can use this one to remove the contamination on the uh, on the tips of the holder on your sample. So another thing is a beam shower. What is a beam shower? So beam shower is something looks like a, a, a beam induced a beam induced a, a depression because you know uh, we for example we uh, we make a very very strong beam in stair mode one C. We open all the aperture and uh, we use a large defocus to shine the electron beam on a large area. Then we open the smallest selected area aperture to protect, uh, to block the beam, protect the uh, fluorescent screen. We can keep this condition for 20 minutes, then it can fix the carbon. The principle for this is, for example, I use a very strong, I mean, since my electron beam can, re, can induce the, the, deep, the, the de, uh, decomposition of the hydrocarbon, okay, that's fine. I use a very strong beam. I want to focus. I want to focus the strong beam on a larger area. Then I can, I can make, I can remove the hydro, hydrocarbon in that area, make them decomposition. And meanwhile, redeposition on the large area uniformly. So if the hydrocarbon can deposit uniformly and fixed on your sample, that's fine. We are only afraid of, for example, the electron beam do the decomposition uh, and the deposition and the redeposition on your sample where your electron beam is. 
you move your yellow from BMO, you are, whenever you move your yellow from BMO, your contamination will happen. That's not good. That's why we can use this beam shower to fix your carbon for some time. So this is, I'll give you one example. So this is a sample. For example, uh, at the beginning, before beam shower, it's very contaminated. And uh, after one minute, you will see this area, very dirty, very dirty thing. Here, here, two minutes larger, three minutes even more larger. But after 10 minutes of beam shower, you can see, after one minute, you didn't see anything. Uh, this is, you see a black uh, area here. This is due to the electron beam damage the uh, amorphous carbon. But after two minutes, uh, you see some con uh, contamination. 30 minutes, uh, you, 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 you can see it's uh, become worse. I use this case to show you that uh, beam shower, of course, can reduce the contamination. But if your sample itself is very contaminated, even you do beam shower, beam shower, it is not so helpful. Like this one, you see, even after 10 minutes beam shower, maybe you can you can you can keep your electron beam for only one minute or longer, but it will be contaminated again. So we have some other ways to remove the contamination. Like uh, we using the anti-contamination device, we call the uh, ACD or the uh, cool taps. In this way, we can uh, the, the partial pressure of the hydrocarbon and some other gas can be reduced in the specimen chamber. That's why I always ask uh, everyone, for example, after your experiment, uh, do the ACD heat. Another one, what you, you can do is you, you can coat it. You can coat some non-carbon film, like a very thin metal on the surface of your sample. But for this weight, usually only work for some kind of a low mag image. Because if you go to atomic electric image, if you deposit, for example, like, like nickel or something, some other metal layer on your sample, of course, maybe no contamination, but the additional layer, the metal layer, will reduce the quality of your image. And also, you can do uh, your experiment use under a cooling condition. You can use a liquid uh, helium holder or cryo holder. I mean, you can cool down your, your observation temperature, then the contamination will be reduced. Of course, there are many other ways. So for example, you can use the uh, ultraviolet exposure. For example, you can use this light, UV light. Uh, you, uh, Exposure, I mean, the light, I mean, on your sample for more than 10 minutes using the energy of the light to remove the contaminant. And also, you can use uh, argon, iron million. I mean, previously, I show you, either you I show you use, uh, the plasma cleaning of the holder. Of course, you can also use the iron million machine. For example, if your sample is a metal sample after the twenty jet polishing, there is some residual chemical on your surface of a sample. If like that, uh, this iron million is a good way to remove that contamination. And also, you can heating up your sample above the room temperature before or during your TM, because at a high temperature, the hydrocarbon is usually unstable. So you can remove this, particularly for a 2D material like graphene, like a uh, sulfide, like this 2D material, very dirty. You can use this method to heat it, uh, your sample at a high temperature for maybe one hour or two hours. Then after that, uh, do, do a TM, TM. And you can also try washing your sample in pure methylene, methanol, ethanol. You can wash your sample. And also you can leave your sample in your microscope overnight. And uh, let, uh, I mean, keep it in high vacuum condition for a long time. Maybe the contaminants can be fully or partially absorbed, uh, desorbed in a high vacuum condition. And also, you can bake your sample, I mean, bake your column, bake your microscope, as I mentioned to you. So there are many ways to, 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 uh, to remove contamination. And, uh, oh, this is my, my talk.
And uh, before I, 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 I end this, I would like to highlight uh, is, uh, you know, this kind of contamination not only happens in, in, in uh, TM, but also in SEM. Uh, the, the, the only thing is why, for example, in SEM, you do not mention a lot about the contamination is uh, for SEM, usually uh, the, uh, the spatial resolution is low, for example, one nanometer, two nanometer. And if like this condition, for example, even there is uh, contamination, there will be no big effect for your image. That's why even your sample is very dirty. For SEM work, you do not feel that it looks very good. But for TM, no. You cannot, if your sample is contaminated, you cannot do beam alignment, you cannot do EDS, you cannot do EOS or atomic image. You almost cannot do any uh, anything. So another thing I would like to highlight is that, so many users, I mean, for example, during their experiment, they saw this contamination, they find me, uh, they told me that, oh, your TM is very contaminated. You see, I cannot do any work. So many users would like to complain that uh, your TM is very dirty. The microscope, the holder is very dirty. But uh, actually, I want to say that 99% uh, of your contaminant, uh, I mean, the source is from your sample. The TM and the holder, I mean, in many, I mean, most of the time it's very good, no contaminated. So many, many times it comes from your sample. You should always find a way to remove the contamination on your sample. I know this is not easy, but you have to try to do this. So, you know, for TM imaging, usually it's very easy. You take an image, only one minute, so you can take so many images. So, but you have to spend many times, for example, prepare a perfect sample for high-end TM analysis. That's why I would like to highlight is this is very critical for any TM work. Okay, so thank you. My talk is.